In this video, we begin our study of alternating current circuits, or AC circuits for short, by introducing a sinusoidal voltage source and the resulting sinusoidal current in the circuit. We show how to represent that current with a real rotating vector called a phasor, and then we extend this idea to finding the voltage phasor for a resistor. And this video is the first in a short series of AC circuit videos where we establish the behavior of resistors, inductors, and capacitors in AC circuits by using real phasors. And then we culminate the series with the real phasor analysis of the series LRC circuit. And you can find links to all the videos in the series down there in the description. So what we've been looking at in this intro animation is a preview of the phasor representation of the current and voltage in a simple one resistor AC circuit. So that's the diagram on the left, in addition to plots of these functions as ordinary functions of time on the right. And we'll deduce all this stuff by the end of the video, but first we have to start at the beginning. So here's a simple AC circuit with a sinusoidal voltage source applied across some unknown circuit elements. And we just represent those with a box. Note that the current I of T is shown as clockwise at this moment, but that's going to alternate sinusoidally as well. And we're going to call this sinusoidal voltage little v of T given by big V times cosine of omega T plus phi, where phi is just some phase angle for generality Big V is the voltage amplitude, and omega is the angular frequency of the cosine function. Now here's a useful reminder of how angular frequency relates to ordinary frequency. Remember that the period of a sine or a cosine is given by 2 pi divided by the coefficient of t. So that's 2 pi divided by omega. But period is the reciprocal of frequency. So we can say the ordinary frequency of this cosine wave is omega over 2 pi, which means that omega is just 2 pi f. Now there's also an alternating current flowing back and forth in this circuit, but as it turns out, that current is not necessarily in phase with the voltage that drives it. So we're going to call this current little i of t, and that's given by big I times the cosine of omega t. So the big I is the current amplitude there. And we're introducing a convention here that we'll use for the rest of our study of AC circuits. We use a phase angle of zero on the current flowing in the circuit. In other words, we measure all phases with respect to the total current function. Now, as we get deeper into the analysis of AC circuits, we're going to frequently deal with adding sinusoidal functions that have different phase angles. And while this could be handled in principle by using a bunch of trig identities, there's a better way to do it, and that's called the phasor representation. So we're going to start with the current phasor. Recall that little i of t is big I cosine omega t. So at some moment in time t, we're going to visualize a vector of length i tilted at an angle of omega t, and we call that vector the current phasor. Note that we can call this the real current phasor, just to distinguish it from the approach that's taught in electrical engineering, where you actually use complex numbers to represent the vectors. But in introductory physics, we traditionally just use real rotating vectors to avoid the new discussion of complex numbers. Now the actual current value at this moment in time is big I cosine omega t. And that has a geometric interpretation in this picture. It's just the projection of this current phasor onto the horizontal axis. Recall there that the horizontal component of that vector is just given by hypotenuse times the cosine of the angle, so that's I cosine omega t. So now we can visualize this current phasor in motion. Starting at t equals zero, this vector rotates with angular velocity omega, and the horizontal projection gives us the real current values as a function of time, where we're using the usual sign convention that a rightward pointing component is positive and leftward is negative. So in practice, we draw phasor diagrams at one moment frozen in time, but keep in mind that we're really talking about vectors that rotate as time advances in order to generate sinusoidal functions from the horizontal component. So next we're going to apply the phasor representation to the simplest possible case, and that's a one resistor circuit with an AC voltage source. And what we're after here is an expression for the voltage across the resistor as a function of time. 
And trust me, things are going to get more interesting with inductors and capacitors where you have weird phase shifts occurring, but resistors are very straightforward. All we do here is apply Kirchhoff's voltage law to this circuit. So I imagine just going on a clockwise loop and just counting up all the voltage changes on a closed loop. And that just gives us little V of T, that's the voltage step up as we cross over the power source, minus little I times R, that's the drop in voltage over the resistor, is equal to zero. And of course, we quickly solve this for V of T. And there I've noted with a subscript that the voltage across the power source is exactly the same thing as the voltage across the resistor. So we're going to call that V sub R of T, and it's just given by little I times R. Now we can replace little i with its definition as a function of time. And we find that the voltage across the resistor is big I, the current amplitude of our current, times r, the resistance of our resistor, times the cosine of omega t. So this means the voltage across a resistor is in phase with the current flowing through the resistor because they have the same phase angle of zero. And we can show this in a static phasor diagram of current and the voltage V sub r like this. So in this diagram, both vectors have their tails at the origin. The green vector is the phasor for VR with a length of IR. And the white vector is the phasor for little i of t, the current through the resistor. And again, the horizontal projections of these phasors give the actual time varying quantities we're trying to plot. So there's the current as a function of time. That's the horizontal component of the current phasor. And that's i times cosine omega t. And there's the voltage across the resistor as a function of time. That's big I, big R, cosine omega t. And recall, this diagram is actually rotating to produce the corresponding sinusoidal functions. So as the animation progresses, starting from t equals zero, we see the current as a function of time. And that's a pure cosine function with amplitude big I. And we see the voltage across the resistor as a function of time. And that's in phase with the current cosine, but it has an amplitude of big I times big R. In the next video, we use the phasor approach to analyze an inductor. And this is where things start to get interesting. It turns out that the voltage across an inductor is out of phase with the current passing through it. I'll post a link to that video at the upper left of the end screen, and I'll see you there.